Hey, I'm Ted Vieira. I hope you guys are doing great. You know, in the last episode, I did mention that I would share with you guys um, some of the experiences I had shooting with different kinds of film over the past year, right? Because, yeah, man, I was in pursuit of a film that would wow me as much as Acros does, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's a challenge, man. Um, but yeah, you know, it didn't have to look similar. It could be the complete opposite. But if it made me just stop and just go, wow, you know, look at that film quality. That's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking for. Now, I did mention that um, I, as my go-to film, I've kind of selected Triax, right? Yeah, and that is a complete departure, right? Uh, yeah, tonally, completely different. Much uh, kind of a harder contrast. Uh, it's a 400-speed film. Classic grain structure. Yeah, it's got that 1960s, 70s kind of documentary <laughs> photojournalism look, right? Yeah, complete departure from that beautiful, smooth, just, yeah, magic you get from Acros. But that's what I wanted. I wanted something different. It, I was getting too, yeah, not frustrated, really. That was the wrong word to use. But in shooting with the fine grain films like Delta, you know, 100 and T-Max, cool films, man. And they were clean. Yeah. I was really happy with it. It was fun. They were fun films to shoot with. But I didn't get that feel from them, you know? Yeah. Uh, FP4, man. Beautiful film. That is a beautiful film. But I kept looking, right? And, I, and shooting Triax in the meantime, enjoying that, man. I love Triax. I push it to 1600 all the time because, yeah, if I'm in low light, the 1600 gives me a lot to work with. And if I'm in, uh, yeah, go out during the day, I just put like a three-stop neutral density filter on. And I can shoot on one ISO all day long into the night. Yeah, it's perfect, man. It's been a very fun film, very cool film to shoot with. But over this past year, um, you guys have sent me in some recommendations, some things, some uh, film that you think I might want to try. And so when I would get these recommendations, I would start to notice when, you know, I would see certain names kind of repeated over and over again. Well, two names that really stuck out <clears throat> was Rolly Retro 80S and Rolly <laughs> Retro 400S, man. You know what? Typically when um, somebody will suggest a film, and yeah, man, I, I don't know this film. I, I'm not familiar with the look of it. I will go to Flickr, right? Yeah, Flickr, man, it just gives you this uh, this real cross-section, this wide variety, because you'll get some photographers that, man, are just nailing it technically. But then you'll see other photographers that, yeah, man, technically they kind of missed it a little bit. But the mood and the feel, man, that that emotional, you know, connection that I can get from that photograph, some pretty powerful stuff. And that's what I saw um, with this Rolly Retro 400S. Man, like built-in mood, strong mood, right? And um, now it's not uh, technically a beautiful film, at least to me. It's beautiful in the way that, man, it, it's a little... Uh, well, yeah, strong grain, man. Grain for days, right? But it's a real tight grain structure, so it almost kind of gives this kind of smooth, <laughs> really grainy, really smooth kind of look. The shadows fall away, man. And the highlights, you know, it's almost like you, it's, I don't know if you can even blow these highlights out. So it's got a really unique, very moody look to it. And I love mood, man. In my photography, it's probably one of the key elements that I want to have run throughout all of my photographs as much as I can. I want that strong sense of mood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the photographs because I did, man. I ordered a, uh, probably about a half dozen rolls of uh, Rolly Retro 400S from Freestyle down in L.A. L.A. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Um, and they got here. I started shooting with it. And yeah, man, it's a pretty cool film. Let me uh, show you some of these shots I got. Okay. To start off, I just went down to some of the vintage shops uh, down in the Arts District, man. I thought, you know, with the look of this film combined with antiques, and yeah, man, you can get some cool shots. You know, really moody stuff.
Now, I did stay out all day, and towards the evening, I moved down to uh, Fremont Street to photograph the performers there. Kind of a Halloween-based show, so you can kind of get an idea of when I first started shooting this film. But man, look at that fog. You know, look at that smoke. Yeah, grain for days, right? But the grain structure with this film is so tight, man, that, yeah, you get this kind of smooth look to it. So you got grain and a smooth look. Cool stuff. I went back out the very next day. You know, I wanted to see how this film would perform in broad daylight, right? Like harsh midday sun. But man, look at those highlights. The following Sunday, I took a drive down to Blue Diamond. Man, I found this Ford truck. How cool is this, man? Yeah, this truck plus this film. Man, it's like the perfect combination. Look at that grain. <laughs> Look at that grain, man. But still so smooth. I went home that night. I uh, still had a couple frames left on the roll. You know, typically this is the kind of stuff I will shoot to finish the roll so I can develop it. I do love the way this film looks. Yeah. What'd you guys think? What'd you think of those shots? The image quality. Man, it does have that kind of retro, kind of old film look, right? Yeah, grain for days, man. <laughs> but the grain structure, it is so tight, right? It makes it so smooth. So you got a lot of grain, but it's so smooth. Yeah, this film does have a uniquely beautiful look to it. You know, is it, yeah, is it the kind of film that I want to have? Is it what I want for my signature look in my photography? And do I even need that? I don't know. But I am looking for it. You know, the jury is still out. I love the moodiness that this film provides. Yeah, it, it's got a gorgeous look. Um, now, all those shots that you saw, that was all shot at box speed at 400, right? 400 ISO. And, you know, even the night stuff down on Fremont. Now, that's not a big issue because you can get plenty of light down on Fremont Street. If you guys ever come to Vegas, man, go down to Fremont Street and do some night photography. You'll get some cool stuff. And it's a lot more interesting to me than going down to the Strip. But, hey, each to their own. But check it out, man. I think you'll like it. So 400, you know, that's still kind of a comfort zone for me. Even though I talk about how, yeah, man, I do appreciate how Tri-X... Gives me that flexibility, you know, shoot day and night at 1600 ISO. Don't worry about changing the uh, film. You can just keep the same film in there and keep shooting, right? That is cool, man. But, you know, I used to push Acros all the time to 400. It's a 100 speed film, and I would push it to 400 all the time. Uh, so that is a comfort zone to me. And even at night, man, I shot a lot with that film at night at 400. So I can, yeah, I do appreciate the flexibility that going up those extra couple steps, it does provide me for shutter speed or aperture, but it's not that big a deal. So yeah, 400 is still kind of a comfort zone for me, but I'm still not sure yet if this would be the main film. The jury is still out. Another thing about this film is, man, it's not inexpensive. <laughs> it's not a cheap film in any regard. I think when I was buying the commercial rolled uh, cassettes of this, it, like, you know, your regular 35 millimeter uh, film you'd buy from the store, I was paying between 8 and $9 a roll. Yeah, man. <laughs> that makes that makes Acros look cheap, right? Yeah, and it's not. Um, so this, this price, it actually motivated me to get into bulk rolling film, right? And I should do that anyway because I shoot so much film that I should just go ahead and bulk roll my own film. Because I looked at if a uh, 100 foot roll of Rolly Retro 400S should give you approximately 80 rolls of film, right? At 36 exposures. And um, I did the math, and shooting 80 rolls of that compared to 80 rolls of commercially rolled film, and I would save about $40. That's, you know, to me, that's significant enough to go ahead and like say, yeah, man, I'm a bulk roller now. So I got all the bulk rolling gear, and, and uh, yeah, I did, did get into bulk rolling. It's cool stuff. It's an easy way to go. If you're not doing it, you know, think about it, because you could save a lot of money, depending on what film you shoot. 
Um, I am still thinking about the 1600 thing. <clears throat> and I'll just let you know that, yeah, man, I did end up pushing it to 1600 to see if I could get that flexibility. The weird thing about that is that there's like no data online for developing times, that kind of stuff. So I had to come up with my own times. But I did want to, I love the film that much that I did want to see if I could get that flexibility out of it. And I'll just tell you right now that, man, it does look pretty good. Um, at 1600, this film does look pretty good. I'll uh, share more about that in the next video with you guys. I'll, I'll share my developing times with you, the kind of developer I use, and I'll share you some photographs. I'll share with you <laughs> some photographs so you can see what you think of Rolly Retro 400S pushed to 1600. Fun stuff, man, right? Yeah, it is fun stuff. Okay, hey, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'll go ahead and answer anything I can in the comments. I'm Ted Vera, and we'll talk to you in the next episode. Thanks.